Hi, I'm Corey Stegeray Pace, a cloud advocate here at Microsoft, part of our AI cloud advocacy team. And I have the pleasure of delivering to you lesson number 17 of our Generative AI for Beginners course covering AI agents. In this lesson, we're going to cover a few things. First, we're going to answer the question of what exactly are AI agents? What are AI agent frameworks? Well, how do they sort of work? And what are the differences between them? And when should you actually use an AI agent uh, when building generative AI applications? The learning goals of this, course, this lesson is going to be explaining how AI agents work, understanding the difference between some of the popular frameworks out there, and then how to uh, design properly working with AI agents. So what exactly are AI agents? This is a very open definition of what AI agents are. Uh, it means a lot to different people when they're sort of building with applications, but to standardize this or to keep it really general, we're going to understand that to, for an AI agent to be defined, you need to have one, a large language model, two, some sort of state, and then lastly, tools. So with a large language model, essentially what I like to say is it's kind of this choose your own adventure game. The large language model is trying to reason or decide on which tools to actually use um, when you're working or interacting with users. And then we have this idea of state, which is really this, the sort of the context of the conversation or inter interaction with users, or even another large language model in terms of the past, what it's been received, and the present of what it's sort of planning to do next. Then it's also maintaining those particular results uh, so that the user is getting the task they want to have completed or that information that they need. And then when we talk about tools, that can be any sort of external system, whether it's a database, uh, an API, uh, even another large language model, or maybe even just some code, whether that's Python function, things like that, that are used being utilized by the large language model or being interpreted by responses that the large language model should, in the next process, execute the function. So now that we have a very general definition, let's actually look at how different AI agent frameworks sort of implement this idea of large language model, state, and tools. So in the case of Langchan, who also has uh, available features, we have the large language model, which can be defined uh, very simply as whatever sort of model that's available or what we're going to be using. In this case, we're going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo. Then from a state management perspective, uh, we can define a specific agent, whether that's, uh, you know, we have this agent, we're going to say we're going to use this to create open AI functions. And what's nice is also we want to define the large language model, which is, again, is going to be GPT 3.5 Turbo, uh, the tools. And in the case of Langchain, there's actually a, a whole catalog of tools that are available. In this case, we're going to use something like called Tavli, which is obviously a search-based tool and then the prompt, so what the actual user is being requested there. So in the case of the large language model, again, it's GP3 3.5. We have this defined. We're going to manage the state by, well, what is actually going to be uh, being discussed or with, between the agent and the user. And then lastly, again, the tools. How do we uh, determine which tools to use and what information that they actually need in terms of uh, whether it's a search, whether it's uh, API request or database. And that's a very standard uh, way that LangChain uses agents. If we were to get more advanced in terms of complexity, we also have other agent frameworks that are available. Uh, things like Autogen, which in fact we can use uh, where there's actually, uh, we can even give, in this case, multiple use multiple large language models or even large language models that have a very distinct or different system message. And the system message is basically a way to sort of define the rules of where the large, large, large language model will operate. So in the case here, maybe we want to indicate or simulate a discussion between a technical team. And we give one uh, agent or the large language model the uh, name of coder in a configuration where the system message is acting as a developer within the team. And in another case, we're going to have a large language model operate as a product manager. And we also give uh, that a clear and distinct system message that may be different uh, than the coder. And then we want to manage the state here. And we actually do this with an on-gen, uh, what we call a user proxy, 
which essentially is one that's going to be interacting with the user, uh, taking in sort of the request, as also operating and making sure that uh, whatever the user wants, whether it's executing a function, that it executes the correct function. And then lastly, in the case of Autogen, we can define tools. And in this case, we're going to use these tools to be uh, functions within our code. So we have a, one in this case doing exchange rate and looking at the symbol and then doing the proper exchange rate there. So when a user in this case, when it says how much is a certain amount in USD in euros, uh, the large language model then re responds back by executing uh, that particular function uh, and getting that result out. And the last uh, framework that we'll look at is Taskweaver. In this case, a Taskweaver, Taskweaver is very much focused on uh, being a code first agent framework. And what they mean by that is first we can define and config the large language model that's available, which is the model. In this case, again, we're going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo. Then the state is essentially managed between what we call a planner where we have, in this case, uh, the task weaver, the agent's going to uh, take in the request. So in the case, we're going to generate 10 random numbers. And then the uh, code interpreter will initiate a plan uh, where how to actually execute that. And in this case, we're actually going to say that it's going to execute the handle of the request as the first step, and then report back the result. Pretty standard in the way that this function or this request would happen because we're random, generating random numbers is pretty straightforward in terms of code. But then we also have other tools that are available. Uh, we can call that, we actually call them in the world of task weaver plugins. Uh, in this case, this uh, plugin is an anomaly detection plugin. In, in the case that we have a function that's going to determine uh, within the data, uh, if there's any anomalies that are available or are not anomalies in the data uh, and report that back to the user. And again, this is a code first framework. It's going to execute within their sort of code interpreter uh, what how that function would operate. And the user has the ability to either control or that execution or not, uh, depending on your config that you have set up. So this was a very brief look at the different AI agent frameworks out there and some of the use cases that you might want to use there. The complete lesson and for more information, do check out the GitHub repo at aka.ms slash genai hyphen beginners, as well as other uh, lessons, including one call, uh, covering function calling, which is also a very important part when we're talking about working with AI agents, as they work hand to hand to execute user tasks that maybe users want to complete in our applications. Thanks and good luck.